For the ones who get it done, the most important part is the one you need now. And the best partner is the one who can deliver. That's why millions of maintenance and repair pros trust Granger, Because we have professional-grade supplies for every industry, even hard-to-find products. And we have same-day pickup and next-day delivery on most orders. But most importantly, we have an unwavering commitment to help keep you up and running. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hey all, welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I'm your host, pharmacist Eric Christensen. Thank you so much for listening today. Go check out reallifepharmacology.com. Get your free 31-page PDF on the top 200 drugs. I just got an email from somebody thanking uh, me for that. Uh, It's Definitely a, a valuable resource, a good refresher if you've been out in practice or if you're uh, going through pharmacology classes. So uh, in addition to that, I've got an exciting uh, new offer, Flippin' Pharmacology Flashcards. Uh, it is not quite out yet uh, at the time of producing this podcast, but a great resource, nearly 600 drugs covered, uh, flashcard, flashcard format, excuse me. Uh, and, um, yeah, I, th- I think it's going to be really, really helpful for folks going through pharmacology classes or preparing for board exams. So, uh, with that, let's get into the, uh, drug of the day. And that is promethazine brand name of this medication is Phenergan. And mechanistically, this drug is classified as an antihistamine and a dopamine blocking agent, uh, Another classification, it is considered a phenothiazine type medication. Uh, In addition, uh, so kind of leaning into the mechanism of action, so uh, antihistamine or H1 receptor blocking activity, uh, that's what's thought to give its anti-emetic type effects, and we'll talk about usages coming up here. Um, Dopamine blocking activity, that's going to be similar to antipsychotics and their mechanism of action. So that can certainly play into the adverse effect profile, which I will discuss. And then also mechanistically, uh, it has some alpha blocking activity. So this drug is an older drug. And um, generally, when we think about some of the, the older medications, uh, they can sometimes be uh, what we term as a little bit of a dirty drug in that it does kind of multiple different things. And the amount of activity regarding that mechanism of action can vary depending upon what dose you utilize. So uh, again, I'll talk about that me- those mechanisms of action and how they're uh, going to uh, cause some of the effects and or adverse effects of the medication. So the primary use that I see this medication used for in practice is for nausea and vomiting. So it's anti-emetic type medication. We do have multiple dosage forms. There's an injection, there's an oral tablet, there's oral solution, there's a suppository. So that is a really nice thing when you're dealing with nausea and vomiting. Because if it's only an oral tablet, if a patient's having trouble keeping things down, uh, they might potentially uh, vomit that back up right away and and you won't get any of the absorption and that type of thing. However, there is some caveats with some of the uh, dosage forms and uh, I will definitely cover that as I'm covering boxed warnings here. So first boxed warning, uh, risk of respiratory depression in patients under the age of two years of age. And obviously risk factors can play a role here as well. Um, Generally under the age of two, we're going to absolutely avoid this medication. Um, As we get into pediatric patients, um, we're probably going to steer clear of this medication if at all possible in favor of other uh, anti-emetic type medications. Um, but keep in mind that boxed warning is uh, is there for uh, promethazine. 
good uh, exam question, good pharmacology exam question, good board exam question, uh, if you're preparing for any of that. The other box warning is also, uh, in my mind, very, very important. So I mentioned kind of some caveats with dosage forms. Promethazine has an extravasation risk. So essentially chemical damage to uh, tissues in and around where you're infusing that type of medication. So that can lead to tissue damage, gangrene, uh, all sorts of nasty stuff from that extravasation. Uh, Because of this, if we're giving uh, the injection, deep IM is preferred. Uh, We generally want to avoid IV at all costs if we can. Subcutaneous is contraindicated as well. So again, uh, lots of potential issues with giving the injectable formulation of promethazine. Uh, In fact, ISMP recommends any uh, avoiding any injectable administration if possible. So I am sub Q IV. Uh, and this is a, a great role that I think pharmacists play in helping to protect patients and pharmacy and therapeutics committees um, play in trying to protect patients. So a uh, great example of where, you know, hopefully we can limit the use of, of injectable uh, promethazine Uh, possibly removed from formulary if at all possible and if we have uh, other options and things like that. Now, you know, with shortages and everything going on in the world of pharmacy and, and, uh, you know, clinical practice, uh, it can be challenging um, to uh, make sure we have adequate coverage and certain drugs around when we're dealing with things like nausea and vomiting. Um, But again, ISMP does recommend avoiding any injectable administration if possible. And that's because uh, of that extravasation risk and risk to damage and tissue and things like that. This medication is on the beers criteria, so generally avoid the use in patients over the age of 65. Uh, Primary reason being uh, that antihistamine, anticholinergic uh, type uh, mechanism of action. So let's kind of transition into those adverse effects. So understanding we've got anticholinergic activity um, that's probably going to lead to sedation, dry eyes, dry mouth, uh, urinary retention is possible, constipation, confusion. There's lots of potential consequences from a drug like promethazine with anticholinergic activity. In addition to that, again, remember I kind of alluded to this being kind of a dirtier drug, lots of mechanism of action. So the dopamine blocking activity, as we escalate doses, that may get more prominent, and that could lead to extra pyramidal symptoms and all the other adverse effects uh, that go along with dopamine blocking type agents. And the other mechanism that I alluded to is alpha blocking activity. So if you remember an example of an alpha blocker, say, you know, tamsulosin, doxazosin, these drugs can drop blood pressure. And indeed, with promethazine, you can see some significant drops in blood pressure as well. So something that we really, really got to pay attention to um, in patients that, you know, they may have some nausea and vomiting to begin with. That might be why we're using the medication. And they may be hypovolemic already. And if we drop that blood pressure further uh, with this agent, that could definitely lead to a a more clinically significant or clinically serious type situation. So you got to pay attention uh, to that blood pressure as we're, you know, starting the medication and or increasing doses as well. This being a unique drug with multiple mechanism of action, you can anticipate that we're probably going to have a lot of wacky and rare uh, adverse drug reactions, and certainly in the literature there have been a bunch reported. So uh, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, that would be consistent with dopamine blocking agents, uh, increased risk for seizure, that has been reported in the literature. Uh, Cardiac arrhythmias can happen. QTC prolongation risk is there potentially. Uh, And then that respiratory failure, respiratory depression, uh, that's kind of uh, 
alluded to in the boxed warning as well and why we don't use it in young pediatric patients. But you also may want to consider uh, that respiratory failure risk in patients who uh, are at risk for respiratory problems already. So patients at uh, high risk for respiratory disease or who have respiratory disease, I should say. So COPD, asthma, that type of thing. And then of course, monitoring parameters. Uh, The two things that I'm probably most concerned about is uh, maybe that blood pressure, at least upon initiation, that type of thing. And again, we're probably only going to use this drug short term, at least hopefully. Um, But we've also got to look out for those anticholinergic effects and then uh, extra pyramidal symptoms as well. All right, let's take a quick break and I'll wrap up with drug interactions. If you're in the market for any pharmacist board certification study material like BCPS, ambulatory care, BCMTMS, or others, go check out meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. If you're a nurse practitioner, med student, anyone else, we've also got numerous lists, resources listed there. Case studies, clinical pearls, uh, drug information books, drug interactions, uh, lots of good stuff there where you can help support this podcast as well. So again, all those links, resources, you can find meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. All right, let's wrap up with drug interactions. So again, I'm going to relate this back to the mechanism of action first and foremost. So Anticholinergic effects, if we have other anticholinergics on board, that's going to worsen that issue. So your over-the-counter diphenhydramine, uh, hydroxazine, tricyclic antidepressants, lots of medications have anticholinergic activity, and using promethazine could certainly uh, add to that. Uh, In addition to that, I think about the effects that promethazine with its anticholinergic activity would have on other medications in that it opposes their potential benefit beneficial effects. So anticholinergics can cause dementia or dementia-like symptoms. And so it can directly oppose use of memantine and dinepazil medications used to manage symptoms of dementia. Uh, I think of uh, BPH and opposing effects of those. So medication like finasteride or tamsulosin. Uh, Laxatives we're using to manage constipation. Well, promethazine and its anticholinergic activity could worsen that as well. Artificial tears, another example where it's going to worsen dry eyes and potentially uh, cause artificial tears to be used, or if patients are already on them, uh, they may uh, experience worsening dry eye symptoms. So uh, remember those uh, kind of counteracting effects as well. So I, I mentioned, you know, BPH meds and, and Flomax. Well, if we use tamsulosin actually in combination um, with promethazine, we could uh, have that additive type dizziness effect. So, and you think of any medication that can lower blood pressure here, um, we can have that additive effect due to promethazine's uh, alpha blocking type activity. And then, of course, we've got the dopamine blocking activity. So any patient with Parkinson's disease, taking Parkinson's medications, you're going to directly oppose the beneficial effects there and potentially worsen their Parkinson's symptoms. Now, additive type effects regarding kind of movement disorders and things of that nature, extra pyramidal symptoms, uh, any type of antipsychotic added on top of promethazine, could certainly worsen that. Metoclopramide has dopamine blocking activity. Again, additive effect there may increase the risk for uh, EPS. Now, keep in mind, metoclopramide may actually be used in combination with promethazine. Uh, Not something I would like to see done generally, but they're going to both have dopamine blocking type activity, and they're both somewhat commonly used or their main uses are uh, nausea and vomiting. So there is potential that a patient could receive both of those, even though uh, we probably wouldn't want to in most cases because they're going to both have dopamine blocking effects and potentially risk uh, extra pyramidal symptoms. And then lastly, CNS and respiratory depression risks. 
Uh, I alluded to the box warning, uh, discussed that previously, uh, but there's also CNS depressant type effects. So drugs that can cause those issues or exacerbate those issues, uh, medications like opioids, alcohol, benzodiazepines, uh, some of the Z drugs like Zolpidem, those can all have a worsening effect on CNS depression and respiratory depression. All right, well, I think that's going to wrap up the podcast for today. Hopefully, you found some clinical practice pearls to pull out of there, some things to pay attention to. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a rating or review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. Uh, go support the sponsor, meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. Uh, and of course, if you have comments, suggestions, uh, promethazine was a suggestion by somebody that I wanted to, to uh, provide some information on this medication. Uh, so if you've got those suggestions, mededucation101 at gmail.com, or you can reach me at LinkedIn, Eric Christensen, PharmD, BCPS, BCGP. With that, I thank you so much for listening. If you have a moment, share the podcast with a friend or colleague. And of course, I, have a, I hope you have a great rest of your day. For the ones who get it done, the most important part is the one you need now. And the best partner is the one who can deliver. That's why millions of maintenance and repair pros trust Granger because we have professional grade supplies for every industry, even hard to find products. And we have same day pickup and next day delivery on most orders. But most importantly, we have an unwavering commitment to help keep you up and running. Call, clickgranger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day, Lil. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW group. Void prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus.